Hi, I'm Lucian the Seller, and I'm back again to talk to you about how to stop being victimized by narcissists and toxic people. If you are the type of person that cannot be strong in situations and still maintain your own individuality and interests, and even if you can sometimes, it's best to leave toxic situations. It stands to reason that if you're drinking something that's making you sick and you keep on drinking it, you're probably going to keep on getting sick. If you are in a marriage or a relationship with somebody that mistreats you, abuses you emotionally, physically, or otherwise, and you stay in that relationship, the abuse is not going to stop. It's not likely going to improve on its own. I'm not saying if you leave it, the person might not get help, because occasionally that happens. With narcissists, it's not as likely because, first of all, they can't admit they have a problem most of the time, unless they lose everything, and even then, some of them don't. Some of them don't come to that place of admitting that they have responsibility for how they treat people or mistreat them. If you keep on taking in that toxicity, that's what I call it, it's toxic, that toxic environment of being put down, the toxic environment of somebody telling you to do something and then saying they never said that, gaslighting you. The toxic environment of promises that never get kept. If you keep on doing that and staying in that, chances are you're not going to be a very happy, secure, balanced person. Although I can't tell somebody that's married, even to a narcissist, to get a divorce, I can tell you that in my own marriage, I earned my way out of the marriage. In other words, I had to leave that marriage with as little trauma to me, to my children, to my ex-husband as possible, or I wouldn't have felt good about my decision to leave it. The way I did this was I followed Dr. Phil's advice. In fact, we even used his book at one point to help try to heal our marriage. Um, we read books, we did videos. Um, Hidden Keys to Loving Relationships was one of the video series we did. We did some other video series together on marriage. Uh, we read tons and tons of books. We went to a lot of counselors, different types of counselors, pastoral counselors, secular counselors, um, all kinds of therapists. And until the last therapist then met him for about an hour and called me up on the phone and said, um, I hate to tell you this, but your husband has narcissistic personality disorder. And if you stay with him, your life is just going to be worse and worse. And I don't know how you stayed this long, but I sure wouldn't stay in it. Even then I didn't leave. I ended up in some pretty bad situations all the way around in the family. And I finally did leave when I had a piece that I had done everything I could on my end to do my part. And that he just plain was not going to change and even told me that. So it was time for me to move on rather than lose myself and every bit of hope in my life that I could have had. So in my case, I earned my way out of that marriage peacefully. Um, there was no fighting over the children, there was no fighting over finances, no fighting over possessions. I just peacefully left. I lived in shelters with my daughter. I lived in a transitional house, but it was not a nasty situation like it could have been. Sometimes there's nothing you can do to avoid the other person's attack, but being willing to let go of the earthly possessions and not fighting over, well, who gets the car, who gets this, who gets that, helped a lot because I didn't have that back and forth stuff I could have had. You learn really quickly that when you die, you can't take it with you. So when you leave, don't take it with you if you don't absolutely have to. And if the other person is against the idea, let them have it. Seriously, the sanity that you gain from getting out of a toxic situation is well worth more than anything you could later on buy to replace. Um, leave if you must and become independent if you can't leave. At any rate, whether you stay in the situation or you leave it, you have to know who yourself, who yourself is. Find out who you are. Find out what you like. Find out what your hobbies are. Find out what your strengths and your weaknesses are. Learn you, whether you're in the situation or you're not. Okay, in my case, the one narcissistic mentor that I was with gave me a car because she saw that my husband at the time was toxic and she felt that I was too dependent on him. Now a lot of that was a projection because she was too dependent on me and was creating a dependence of me onto her. 
so it just wasn't healthy. Point is, she gave me a car in order for me to go back to school and become something. She was all about success and becoming what you can be, um, achieving your destiny in the Lord, things like that. So, rather than fight her after a while, I did go back to school. I got my bachelor degree in psychology, specializing in child psychology, and I'm working on my master's degree right now, which thankfully I will have in March 2013. And I hope, hope to get a life coaching job somewhere. That's what the cry of my heart is, is, to be a life coach. I no longer am a person that becomes a willing victim of narcissists or toxic people. If I see toxicity, I will call it for what it is, and I will talk to the person and say, that is not acceptable behavior, and you're not going to treat me that way. I'm better than that. You do not need another person to survive. Let's look at this objectively. One of the first things that goes wrong in relationships with a narcissist is that you start believing that that narcissist person is your be all and end all in your life. They have all the answers, they have the direction, the guidance, whatever it is you look up to them for. Even if it's just the company of having them there. You elevate them. I kind of showed this on my other book. I'm going to do it again right now. Here's the narcissist. Here's you. You look up to this person. They're way up here. And you just bow down to them. Oh, whatever you want, I will do it. Whatever you say is the truth. Whatever you tell me, I believe it. And pretty soon you're way, way down here because you put all your hopes in this person right here. And they're way up there. And then if you go down far enough, you lose you. You're gone. And that's what happened to me for a while. To the point where I had post-traumatic stress disorder and had to go on medicine to be able to rethink pleasant thoughts about myself again and to get my head back in gear and balance so that I could learn the things that were me and not become everything this other person wanted me to be. You become their slave. Um, you've got to stop doing that. You need to start being aware, alert, and informed of what's going on in your life. For instance, my daughters know not to ever come to me and say that they're bored because I will get out a piece of paper and a pen and make them a list of all the things they can do. When you get bored, you get into trouble. You have pity parties, you do things you regret. So keep busy. In other words, find what you like to do. Maybe you're not somebody that's super talented in certain things. Maybe you are and you just don't know it. I don't know. Find something to do. Go roller skating. Go swimming. Join a Y. I don't know. Do something. Because the narcissist preys on people that are bored and not busy and not focused and not goal oriented. There are so many things in life. To me, living life is easy because I always find things to do. I can play guitar, I can play my keyboard, I can work on my homework, I can be on the computer, I can take a walk, I can write down scriptures, I can chat online, I can talk to my fiance, I can hang out with my daughter anywhere. It's just a matter of doing something. People ask me how I go free and healed from the past abuse in the narcissistic situations I was in. I had to talk to myself. I had to tell myself I was a good person. I was worth more than how I was being treated. I wasn't all those negative things I was being told that I was. I was being bullied in the relationships I was in. I became a victim. I had to refine me. I didn't know who that was anymore. I became so much like what those people wanted me to be that I no longer existed. So I literally had to go second by second on a literal watch on my arm and tell myself I could get through that next minute without that person guiding me and telling me what to do. I had to tell myself, okay, you like the color blue. You don't like it because this person told you to like it. You like it because that's something you like. You like to eat pizza, but you don't like anchovies, even though that person told you, oh, they're great. You like pepperoni and mushrooms. You know, I had to learn what was me and what was them. Unfortunately, in a lot of um, families, parents do this to their child. They tell the children what they want. This actually happened, a real-life situation. At one time, I owned a restaurant, and I will never forget this, and it makes me angry even thinking back on it. There was a little boy who wanted a hamburger, actually a cheeseburger, and his grandmother came up to the counter, and she turned around to the little boy and said, What would you like to eat? And he said, I want a cheeseburger, Grandma. She said, oh, well, we'll see. Well, then she turned to me and said, 
um, just get him some french fries. He'll be fine. And the little boy overheard her and said, no, Grandma, I want a cheeseburger. And he started screaming. And she said, oh, well, they're out of cheeseburgers. Okay, I never told her we were out of cheeseburgers because we weren't. In fact, I had some cooking on the grill. I was furious. She said, oh, he'll just have the fries. So I gave him the fries, but I wanted to jump over that counter and lose my Christian dignity so fast. I can't even tell you. Do not tell your child what they want or what they don't want. I used to like climbing trees and my mother would say, oh, you don't want to climb the tree, you might fall. Okay, she can tell me, I'm concerned if you climb the tree that you might fall, but not, you don't want to climb the tree. Yes, I did want to climb the tree. Don't tell me what I want to do. Don't tell your child what they do and don't want to do. That's cruel. You are not in their head. You don't know what they want, and you don't have a right to tell them what they want or what they're going to like and what they're not. Now, if you happen to know your child's taste buds, and you know that they throw up when they eat spinach. You might say something like, Honey, are you sure you want to eat that? Because you know you kind of get sick on spinach. But don't say, Oh, honey, you don't want to eat that. Maybe they do want to eat it. Maybe they want to taste it and see that they don't get sick on it this time. I don't know, but you don't own another person's brain. You don't, you're not in their body. You're not attached to them. Children are individuals. Let them individuate from you. They are going to grow up one day and become adults, but if you keep trying to make them your perpetual child, they're not going to grow up, and then some poor woman or man is going to have to put up with a grown-up baby the rest of their life because you didn't let them become their own person. So don't do that to your children, and don't let somebody do that to you either if you're a child watching them. If you, your parent is abusive and they're trying to make you attached to what they want you to believe and do and see, look them in the eye and say, no, I don't like anchovies. No, I don't want to see that movie. I don't like those kind of movies. And if you get abused because you speak up, then go get help. Either way, if you're in an abusive or toxic situation, or a neglect situation, or a situation where you're being treated like you're your parent's star of the family, and you can't do anything wrong, and you can't mess up, and you have to have all the answers, go and talk to a therapist. Go talk to a safe person, a teacher, somebody. Get out of the situation if you possibly can, if it's safe to do so. Just get the help. Don't stay there. Don't keep the secrets of the family. The hidden things that stay hidden are often the most dangerous. Thank you for watching my series. Stay tuned. Um, I don't know what's coming up next, but I'm sure it'll be good because this information is so useful and helpful to so many people, including myself. I'm just glad I got to share it. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Let me know how everything's going. Comments, questions, welcome. Just be decent about it, that's all I ask.